In the last lesson, we looked at the set of rotations in three dimensions and showed that it does form a group. In 3D, we actually have a special name for this group. We'll call it SO3, where SO stands for special orthogonal. The phrase orthogonal describes a very unique characteristic of these 3 by 3 matrices. We know that multiplying a matrix by its inverse should get us back the identity, just via the qualifications for a group. But a unique trait of these matrices is that the inverse matrix also happens to be the transpose. This works out so some rotation matrix multiplied by its transpose also gives us back the identity. This is what we mean when we say the matrices are orthogonal. Inherently, any matrix with its inverse equal to its transpose will have a determinant equal to plus or minus 1. But if I take a matrix with determinant negative 1, let's use a simple example with negative 1, 1, 1 down the diagonal, and I apply this matrix to a coordinate system, we notice that we can't achieve the resulting coordinate system by any combination of rotations. Instead, we say that this coordinate system has been reflected about some axis. Another way to say this is that we've switched from a right-handed to a left-handed coordinate system. In order to preserve the handedness of the system and restrict the group to just rotations, we require that all elements of SO3 have a determinant of positive 1. This is where the term special comes into play. If we look at the set of elements just with determinant negative 1, we'll find that these transformations don't even form a group. Take a minute and prove this for yourself. Go through the four requirements that we've been using in the past two lessons. Pause the video and prove to yourself that the set of transformations with determinant negative 1 does not form a group. Hopefully you are able to do this on your own, but let's go over the answers real quick. First, we always check the identity. In this representation, we're using matrices, and we need some identity such that any matrix multiplied by the identity yields the same original matrix. This matrix must be the identity matrix, with ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. However, this identity matrix has a determinant of positive 1, which automatically means it's not contained in the set, so identity fails. We'll actually find that closure fails, too. Let's combine some matrix, we'll call it R1, with another matrix, which we'll call R2. The requirements for this set demand that both matrices have a determinant of negative 1. Linear algebra tells us that the determinant of the product of two matrices is equal to the product of the determinants, which it looks like gives us positive 1. So it looks like the combination of any two elements of the set is not in the set, so closure fails. When we check the inverse, we know we want some element combined with its inverse to equal the identity. But once again, the identity doesn't exist in the set. So inverse automatically fails. Associativity is really the only reliable one here. Thankfully, matrix multiplication is still associative, but that doesn't really mean anything. The other three requirements have failed, so the set of transformations with determinant negative 1 is not a group. Armed with this information about SO3, we are now ready to move on to our next topic, index notation.